All right. I think we're coming on live now on both the TikTok and the Facebook. Good evening, Sister Pittman. I know you're going to be out there. So once I see Sister Pittman join and others and others, we'll get started. I should be live on TikTok. Hit refresh. Welcome to our Sunday broadcast of the Word of the Lord. We're happy to have you. We thank everyone for your support and your a generous love towards us. Uh, each Sunday night, we bring a message. We bring a message from the Lord uh, that would encourage you, we pray. We believe also that it should take you to a place of uh, hope, a place where you feel like you know God is in control of your lives and that you have a little pickup for the week ahead. I'm glad to have with me tonight my amazing, beautiful, <laughs> loving wife, Hello, good evening, everyone. 25 years, 26 courting. And so I want to wait one more moment here for another person or two to join on Facebook. And then we're going to jump in tonight. Get your get your Bibles out. Um, I'm not going to read to you, but if you want to follow along, uh, we're going to be coming from a little bit of James. But more importantly, Kings chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17. Again, Brother Ken is not going to read to you tonight, but I want you to, Shannon, good to have you. I'm starting to see who's available. Miss Shannon, she calls herself trouble, but she's not trouble. No, no trouble. <laughs> she's also, Shannon's also a good singer. Remember that they did? Oh, yeah. She invited us on. Oh, it was she Shannon? Was, Shannon? Shannon. She was singing right there in harmony with us. Good to have you. Let's see who else. I'm trying to get my update here. My computer. Come on, don't run slow tonight. This is not the night I needed to do that. All right. You keep an eye on the comments if something uh, comes up. My computer is just running really, really slow. I'm not sure why. So let's have a word of prayer. And then we're going to jump right in here and pray this evening. Father, we thank you again for your word. I'm going to tell you right now, I can't, I, I will not be able to do this tonight. I don't have the uh, ability to, to speak, preach, teach the way that you need me to. And so unless you come through here and help me, um, I don't know what to say. And so I humble myself before you and ask that you speak through me. Lord, send whoever you want to send tonight. I pray that the, the word of God encourages us, points us in the right direction, gives us insight what's next we trust you we we trust you lord that even in a drought you're going to make sure that we're taken care of hallelujah all right so before we get started in tonight's word um i do want to shout out all of my friends and family members who uh, made this weekend really amazing um so this is our homecoming weekend for our university. We both attended Langston University. It's the only HBCU in Oklahoma, the one furthest west of the Mississippi. And during this time of year and the weekend, everybody who can makes their way back to Oklahoma. And it just becomes like this big family reunion that lasts like from Friday night to Sunday morning. You know, we literally just came from another event, like walked in the house, sat down, got something. And now we're on the to, to the next thing. And here's what we believe. We believe that community is important. We believe the connections that you make throughout the way have an impact on the lives of people that you either believe in, pray for or just get to be a part of. And so if you are part of the Langston University homecoming weekend, L's up. We we thank you. If we if we didn't get to see you one way or another, if you didn't get to see me or her, maybe you saw my brother or some family members. We're just grateful for the opportunity to be family, to be community, and to continue to grow uh, in the Lord. Baby, did you have a good weekend? I said I'm going to ask you any questions, but did you have a, a good weekend? <laughs> I had a really good weekend. It was so nice to see everyone, reconnect, see old friends, 
make new friends. I it like that. Me. I like yeah. that. Make new friends. All right. Sister Pittman's on. So we're, we can go ahead and get started now. We have a quorum. All right. I'm going to start tonight in James, but I'm going to transition from James over to Kings. James to Kings. Um, and so in James chapter 5, and we read this often during my morning prayer, but the Lord put it on my heart uh, this week as I was studying to share this message out of James that transitions us to, to Kings. James chapter five, verse 12, it says, but most of all, dear brothers, do not swear either by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned for it. Hey, is, any, is anyone here among you why is it doing that? Is yours doing that? What? Getting some weird reading. That's that my my phone looked like it wanted to scroll. That was weird. Let's be free or something. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he should keep on praying about it. And those who have reason to be thankful should continually be singing praises to the Lord. We know that you got to keep a praise in your spirit. You said James. I'm sorry, James. James chapter five, verse I'm in verse fourteen. Now we're gonna read twelve through nineteen. James 5, 14. Through 19. Okay. Hey, is, any, is anyone sick? So first he asks, is anyone suffering? Now he's asking, is anyone sick? Well, then he should call on the elders of the church. And they should pray over him. Pour a little oil upon him. Calling on the name of the Lord to heal him. And their prayer, if offered trusting God, it will heal them. For the Lord will make him well, and if his sickness was caused by some sin, the Lord will forgive. Admit your faults to one another. Just admit it. Pray for each other. Hmm. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power, wonderful results. Verse 17. Underline this or start putting some notes in your comments. Elijah, who was completely human as we are, just like us. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for the next three and one half years. Then he prayed again after the three and a half years. And this time it rained. Down it poured. The grass turned green. The gardens began to grow again. Dear brothers, if anyone has slipped away from God and no longer trusts and someone helps him understand the truth again, that person who brings him back to God, who have saved a wandering soul from death, bringing about the forgiveness of many sins. I find it interesting, as the Lord was teaching me this week, that in the middle of James's five chapters, telling everyone to draw close to God and have faith. And if you don't have faith, it's, it's like the wave of a sea. And how can you claim to know Christ and you don't even love your brother? And, I mean, James gives a, an amazing uh, uh, message here. What's causing people to fight? Chapter four. Look here, you rich man. Chapter five. And then he throws Elijah in here. He talks about prayer, talks about believing, talks about going out of your way to, to truly find an answer from the Lord. And he says, even Elijah, who was human, just like you, when he prayed that no rain would happen, it happened. He said, just like us, human, just like you. He was James was talking to a group of people who were human, who probably felt like they didn't deserve anything, probably felt like their prayers may not get answered. They felt like they didn't uh, accomplish anything in the Lord, felt like perhaps they didn't walk with God long enough. And he said, just like Elijah, he is just like you. But when he believed, it happened. Now, I want to take you over to 1 Kings we're going to jump over to 1 Kings and we're going to go to chapter 17. And this is the story of Elijah and that rain. James used this particular story to talk about yep, 1 Kings chapter 17. And we're going to look at 17, 18, and 19. And like I said, I'm not going to read you all of this tonight. I'm just going to preach, teach. James says, 
If you're sick, if you're suffering, go to the elder, the elders of the church. Go to someone who is an elder. Go to someone whose faith is strong. Go to someone who's who can be a mentor, someone who's done this, been there. Go to them. Ask them to pray with you and for you. And their pray, if offered, believing like it's actually going to happen, it's going to happen. Just like Elijah. And oh, by the way, you're just like Elijah. First Kings chapter 17. Then Elijah, the prophet from Tishib and Gilead, told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, the God who I, who I worship and serve, there won't be any dew or rain. You know how you wake up in the morning sometimes in the summer and it's just cool enough to where uh, the moisture in the air, the humidity allows the grass to look like it's been rained on, but it hadn't been any rain. It's just a little bit of dew. He said there won't be dew or rain for several years until I say the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to east and hide by the church of brook. And at that place, east the word enters Jordan River Drink from the brook, eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to feed you. What we're going to find without reading this to you, and you can go back and read this, this, is an amazing, amazing story of faith. Elijah goes and is fed by the ravens morning and night until the ravens no longer can find food because it's now a drought. The Bible doesn't give us a time period of how long this drought went on right here, but we know it was three and a half years because it tells us that in James. And during this time, the Lord tells him, okay, I'm going to take care of you. He thought that he wasn't going to eat anymore in verse 11. He, he thought that he didn't have any more food. He said, I need you to do me a favor. Just get up, go, and you're going to find a woman. Go to that woman. Ask her to cook for you. Mm -hmm. This is during the three years that James talks about. Verse 12 says, when he approaches the woman, she was a widow. She, all she had was her son. We don't know how old the son was, but he's young enough to go pick up sticks and pay attention. The Bible says that all she had with her. Now, now, Elijah's already eaten every day. He's He's got a full stomach during this drought. She She's done. She doesn't have anything left to eat. He tells her, go get me something to eat. Go get me something to drink. Make me something. She says, sir, all I got left, verse 12, is a single piece of bread. I don't, I don't even have that. I only have a single piece of bread. I only have in hand a handful of flour and a little cooking oil. And that's at the bottom of the jar. Baby, we, we've been at the, the jar in there and the flour get to the bottom or the cornmeal get to the bottom. You can't even use the, the, the little scoop or the one cup right. to get down to the bottom because there's nothing at the bottom. This lady said, I don't have anything, Sister Pittman, mm. at the bottom to even get enough to make me something. So we're just going to try to gather some, some firewood, cook us what we can, and then we're just going to starve to death and die. She'd given up. She, she, she was done in her drought. She didn't have any more fight left in her season. Of course, she didn't realize that this was a season for everybody. Everybody was going through the exact same thing she was, but the, the enemy had convinced her that she and she alone was, was struggling the most. Mm. You, you're going through it really bad. Like you're getting ready to die. Everybody's going through the drought. Even the preacher had run out of food from the raven. Mm. Even the preacher had gotten to a place where he had to now ask for a handout. The preacher had to say, ma'am, can you get me something? She said, get you something. My situation is worse than your situation. We will always have this thought that, man, I must, I must really be going. You don't know what I'm going through. I'm going through something worse than you. Here's what the preacher told her. Here's what I need you to do. Don't, don't be afraid. Verse 13. I got so many points I'll make tonight. The Holy Spirit is going to do the rest and speak to all of you. First thing he told us, don't be afraid. But I'm going through a drought. I'm going through a season where I don't have enough. Me and my family are struggling right now. We don't have 
even enough food to eat tonight. But don't be afraid. But we're starving. I'm starving spiritually. I'm starving emotionally. I don't have the connections that I need. I'm just lost. I just want to die. He said, don't be afraid, though. Why would the man of God tell her not to be afraid? James said, if you're hungry, if you're thirsty, if you're suffering, go let somebody pray for you. She says, I just want to die. I just want to die. Does anybody out there just feel like this lady sometimes? Like, I just want to stop. I only feel like going on. Don't be afraid. Now, what's next is instructions. Not motivation, not a pick-me-up message. Go do something. Quit being afraid. Now go work. Go ahead and cook that last little meal. Make, bake me a little loaf of bread first. And afterwards, there's still going to be enough food for you and your son. For the Lord God of Israel says that there will always be plenty of flour and oil in your containers. There will always be food and oil in our containers. Mm. I don't care what it looks like. How little it becomes. Getting ready to say. I don't care literally how much <laughs> bread we it make. Doesn't look, what, what you're saying and what we see is not always in alignment. Because if you look ahead of what, what you have, it will look like all you got is just a little bit left. I only got a little bit of energy left. I only got a little bit of nerve and patience left. I only got a little bit of stamina for this marriage. I don't know how much I got left financially. Like, what's next week going to bring? We, we we just made the got just got the paycheck, just made the money, and it's already halfway gone. And he says to everybody who's listening to my voice tonight, Sister Pittman, there will always be plenty enough flour, there'll be enough oil in those containers until the time when the Lord sends rain for the crop. Despite what was happening, he wanted her to obey. He wanted her to have faith. He wanted her to trust God's unwavering plan. There's going to be provision. Despite the scarcity of the situation, hear me tonight. Father will always provide. He made sure Elijah had something at the brook. He made sure that he had ravens and now he had a woman to provide food. The Lord is the provision. Your job is not the provision. Your 401k is not your provision. Your savings account is not your provision. Your wife's job, your husband's job is not your provision. Your social security is not your provision. As long as you got the father mm. on your side, he's going to make sure that you're taken care of. But like James said, you, you got to believe. James said it in the very first chapter, and I'm connecting the two together because James is now alluding to. That means everything that James was writing in James 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, he had this backdrop of the story of Elijah and the drought. And he could not not un, he could not not read the story of the woman and just talk about the drought because it's in between the three and a half years. And so I just want you to know you got to stand. You cannot give up in your marriage. You cannot give up with your kids. You cannot give up on your health. You cannot give up on life. You cannot just throw in the towel and say, well, we're in a drought. I just want to go ahead and die. He says, you're always going to make, I'm, I'm just going to make sure you always are provided for because I am your provision. A lot of people mix up the scripture and, and that David wrote, do I look the, the real meaning of that verse is I am your provision. A lot of people mix up the scripture and, and that David wrote, Do I look the, the real meaning of that verse is do I look to hills or mountains, something stable for my help? David says, No, my help comes from the Lord. The ravens brought him food morning and night. The Lord is going to bring you nourishment spiritually, phys physically, mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. morning mm -hmm. and night. Mm 
The Lord allowed him to get to a brook that was constantly running. The Lord has the Holy Spirit that is constantly flowing, constantly running, constantly energizing you. And when if, I, if nothing else fails, if you're that woman, he's going to make sure people come into your life that can help you, nourish you, give you word, give you instruction. Mm, that's good. That's good. Verse 18. It happened. She, they ate. They, they were taken care of. Verse 18. One day, that same son that she thought would die one day with her, he ends up dying again. We have no context. Was this year one? Was this year two? Was this close to year three? Was this month one? We don't know. It just says one day. Everybody has a one day. One day, all the wheels fell off the bus. One day, I got news that something was wrong with mama. One day, they they just let me go. Man, one day, I don't know what happened. The marriage just fell apart. One day, I found myself addicted to the thing that I said I'd never be addicted to. One day, I found myself crying, and I couldn't stop crying ever again. One day. One day, this woman's son became sick and ill mm. and then died. She went to the man of God who was living upstairs. I forgot to mention that part because I'm not reading this to you, but she, he moved in with her. Ooh. The man of God became a present help in the time of trouble for her. This is a lot of symboli, s s symbolism. There's a lot of uh, uh, metaphors in this, this scripture that points us back to Yeshua she was struggling. She was in trouble. They were getting ready to die. They were starving spiritually. Hear this message. And the man of God, son of man, comes in and lives with them. Even when the son of man is living with you, even when you have the Holy Spirit, some things in your life may try to die. Life can get very, very hard. Well, I thought I was a Christian. I thought I was saved from all the problems why is this still happening? And she cried. What did you do to me? What have you done? Did you come here to punish me for my sins by killing my son? Sometimes we feel the devil will convince us that the things that have happened to us is due to our sin. And I've preached mm -hmm. grace for so long. Uh, I'm of no denominational background. I'm of no uh, traditional religious constructs, I truly believe that the Bible speaks of grace. You don't have to do anything to deserve a kind of grace, like unconditional grace. Like you sinned last night and your life is still going to be really good grace. Like he's not pulling you over because you made a mistake kind of grace. Yes, he disciplined those he loves, but not in a way of wrath, not in a way where you're going to be in trouble with the Lord. She was convinced that perhaps the thing that was happening to her was because of sin. The thing that, that went the other direction was because of sin. And although I preached a message last week on holiness and righteousness for the believer who's made a decision for holiness and righteousness, she made a decision to allow the man of God to come live inside her home, to come into her temple. She became the temple of the Holy Ghost. He was there. So I can tell you this, there's no punishment to anybody who's made a constant, like she had a constant daily presence of God in her life. Life still happened though. She said, I must be being punished for my sins. God, are you here to punish me? God, is this, is this, a, is this for something I said or did last week, last year? Oh, this must be karma. Let me cancel that myth right now. You do reap what you sow, but a lot of people forget that scripture says, but if you make it right, if you ask for forgiveness, if you go to the person and say, hey, I messed up, then there is no reaping because I've, I've, I've made it right. So here she is living right. The man of God is living in her home and life still happens. And she thinks, well, I must have sinned. Mm. No, you didn't sin, brothers and sisters. Sister Pittman, life doesn't happen to you. 
because of some past sin, some old sin. That's not the rules. That's not how God operates. Well, why am I? So why is all this stuff happening to me? Because we're still humans. We're still in these carnal bodies. We still live within this flesh. This flesh is still part of the sin nature and it will die one day. Because of sin that tried to reign in my body, I have an expiration date. My soul is saved. My body's going to die. So life is going to happen. Mom's jumped online. I see her out there. Hope y'all had a good musical today. Elijah says, give me this body. Give me that boy. Mm. Let me, let me, let me have him. So, sometimes, hmm, sometimes you got to give the Lord. Again, Elijah's representing God. Elijah's representing Holy Spirit. He's representing faith. So, some, sometimes you got to give that thing that's dead, that thing that's no longer alive, that thing that you've given up on, that thing that you're crying about, you got to give it completely to the Lord. Um, there's a story uh, in the Bible of, of Yeshua healing a young girl, very similar to what Elijah's doing here. He takes this little boy, carries the boy, oh, so symbolic, upstairs. He didn't do it right there. He he took the boy somewhere higher. He took that thing that was dead, that thing that, that you feel like is no longer living and took it higher. He took it upstairs, that thing that you think is there's there's no hope for it. Perhaps it's not even worth fighting for. The man of God took it and took it upstairs. The Bible says that went to a guest room where he lived, laid on the body laid the body on the bed and then cried out while laying on this body oh lord my god why have you killed the son of this widow with whom i'm staying and he stretched himself upon the child three times oh lord god please let this child's spirit return to him oh lord let this child's spirit return to him Three times. Got on the body a third time. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let this child's spirit, body, spirit return to his body. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer. And the spirit of the child returned. And he became alive again. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter uh, 9. Verse 18 is where we find the story where Yeshua was teaching and uh, a ruler named Jarius came to him and said, my daughter just died. And Yeshua asked, or they asked him, will you come and just lay hands so that they might live on the way? Y'all know this story to this little girl's house. The woman with the issue of blood comes. You would think that would have hindered all of this the lord is still in control they make it to the man's house the world the little girl is dead he says she's not dead she's just sleepy they laughed at yeshua they said there's no way this man can be serious like she's gone he took the little girl by her hand and she arose i am a firm believer based on scripture alone. James knows these stories. James was Yeshua's baby brother. So he knew the story of his own brother raising this woman from this little girl from the dead. James is now alluding to Elijah who knows Elijah raised this little boy from the dead. He is literally saying at the, at the very end of James, is anybody suffering? Emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, you got ethical issues, moral issues. Like, is anybody in this room suffering? Is anyone sick? Mm. Elijah was just like us. When he prayed and believed, it happened. I saw my brother pray. 
And it happened. That little girl came back to life. Elijah prayed for this little boy and his spirit returned to him. I'm here to tell you tonight that whatever you think has left you, whatever part of you you think is dead, whatever part of you you think is no longer viable, like you just crying, you don't have any more emotion, even more tears about it. Yeshua is here. He can bring that thing back to life if you allow the man of God, the Holy Spirit, and you believe you have to do your part. See, that woman didn't fight it. She didn't say, no, he's, she, he's gone. He said, let me have him. She said, okay, take him. She brought him back downstairs, verse 22. See, I told you, he's alive. Now I know for sure, like she said, I know for sure you are a prophet. And that whatever you say is from the Lord. I'm here to tell you that anything that's in this Bible is from the Lord and you can believe it. If he said you are a conqueror, then anything that this says is true. Yeah. If he says that you can do all things that, that strengthen you through Christ, then I, I believe it. If, if it says that no weapon formed against you will ever win, I mean, they'll try. They'll try to discourage you. They'll try to shoot you down. They'll try to be ugly and mean. They'll try to come at you sideways. But my Bible tells me yeah. that it's in him we live. Not them. It's in him we oh, move. That's good. Not that's them. Good, babe. In him we have that's purpose. Good. Not in them. I don't have purpose in them. Yeah, that's good. I don't have purpose in the world. My purpose is not that's defined good. by groups, organizations, and other people's thoughts and opinions. In it's in him. It's in him. Elijah represents. God, you're the spirit. This woman yields to God, the spirit, the thing that was dead, the thing that hurt her, the thing that she thought was lost, came back to life. I think what's also interesting in this story is she, she we start this story with her already giving up. She'd already thought she was going to die. We're going to die anyway. So we're just getting a few more sticks for our last meal. And so she had already in her heart, wasn't even going to fight it. No, she didn't have any tears for life. She was done. She had found so much hope in God. If you have been there, you had found yourself, yourself going way back up and not even think about all that. Those, not even think about we were going to die before. And then life does hit you. And it brought her to tears. God said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. And guess what he did? He helped her. See what my notes have to say here. Ver chapter 18. I'm going to transition. The Bible says that in between this time or after this time, rather, we're at the point where the Lord tells Elijah, go talk to e uh, Ahab. Tell him that the rain is going to end soon. Um... Again, I'm not going to read all this to you. I'm just going to give you how this breaks down. Um, Ahab was really into idolatry. Him and anybody remember who Ahab's wife was? Everybody mm -hmm. claims they know who it is because they, they call her a name all the time. They say people have her spirit. It's not, it's not a trick question. Ahab and... <laughs> Stone. Jez oh, Jezebel. Jezebel. You said that everybody says. <laughs> everybody says they have they, they Some, have her someone spirit. Someone have her Je spirit. Jezebel spirit. So a Ahab and Abr uh, Ahab and Jezebel uh, were really an idolatry. Like they worship false gods. They have made idols out of things that God said don't make idols out of. And this was part of the Lord's judgment to the sinners. He wasn't judging the people of Israel. It just happened that the people of Israel or God's people were caught up in this, this drought. And he goes and tells them, um, your time is soon to come. Again, I'm not going to read the whole story to you. you great read. Chapter 15, 16, 17, 18 of 1 Kings. Je Jezebel ends up dying. 
Ahab ends up dying. It rains again. The spiritual drought or the emotional, physical, whatever drought you're dealing with, it ends. God turns it all around. He reminds Israel that you have to come back to me, though. I'm going to end that situation in your life, but you have to make sure that you wake up. Mm. The whole thing that Elijah was doing that James was alluding to was that Elijah also see he assumed James assumed that we knew this story. James assumed that we, we knew the intricate details of first Kings chapter 15, 16, 17, 18. He just goes straight from when Elijah prayed, there was no rain. And when he prayed again, there was rain. But in the context of all of that, James has some more story that he thinks we knows. And part of that story was same thing that James says at the very end. If you can get to people and have them wake up, go back and read the end of James. What did we just read? You will have saved a sinner's soul from the wrath of God if you can get them to wake up. Elijah had to tell the people of God. He tried to tell Ahab and Jezebel, wake up. Wake up, you sinners. Wake up, you people who are lost. Wake up, you people who are confused, thinking that you're doing good, but you really aren't. Looking religious, looking godly, but have no actions or true heart for God's people. You're doing all this stuff that looks really good, but deep down inside churches in Revelation, I know who you really are. Mm -hmm. What did he say in Romans? I, I, you, you, very first chapter we studied, we're going to finish out Romans this Tuesday, a very last summary. But he tells them in chapter one, you have a good reputation about yourself. Mm. Everybody appears. The nation. The whole nation think you're really good people. <laughs> Y'all walking around here with your... <laughs> I was going to say something. Uh-uh. Be careful. Y'all walking around here as if you have achieved it all. And God is saying, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This is a spiritual drought. We're in a spiritual drought right now. Mm. There are a few people who God is leading to the brook. The ravens are bringing food. You're finding the widow woman. And although there's a drought happening around the whole world spiritually, you feel encouraged. You feel strengthened because you woke up. You're not the Ahabs. You're, you're not the Jezebels. You've made a decision to follow Yeshua. He's rooted out of you the world's filth. He's rooted out of you the, the, the carnal nature. You know, our biggest problem, babe, in my opinion, is not sinners in our world. Our biggest problem is carnal Christians. Mm. Sinners know who they are. Ahab and Jezebels know who they are. They make no, no uh, uh, mockery or shame about being who they are. Like they, this is I'm a Jezebel. They still talk about me today. I know who I am. I'm confident in my idolatry. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm going to be Jezebel. That's not the biggest problem today. It's the widows out there who've given up. The ones who are carnal in their thinking, the ones who think like the world, act like the world. I can't tell the difference in your actions because that's how a worldly person acts when they get angry. That's how a worldly person acts when they get in their feelings. That's how a worldly person acts when, when things don't go their way. Th that's exactly how the world acts when, when they get caught up into the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Like, I can't tell the difference. You said you were Christian. You said you go to church. You said that you're all in. But you talk to people the wrong way. You look at people the wrong way. Yes. You don't speak to people yes. the right way. Yes. You are that person that yes. we're supposed to be representing, yet you are hurting the body of Christ. How do you read your Bible every day, claim to go to church, but you hurt people? Wake up! It's the carnal Christians. Everybody that's ever left the church has told me that a church had made them mad. Or I think they call it church hurt. It wasn't a sinning preacher. It wasn't a it wasn't a, a worldly pastor that had them walk away or a worldly church mother that had them walk away. It was a carnal Christian. It was a carnal church mama who was mean and ugly. It was a this is my church and this is how we're gonna do it. 
kind of pastor, a carnal pastor. Mm. God's tasting your faith. He tested the widow on his faith. He renewed her faith twice. Twice. He had to get that carnality out of her. He had to get her to a place where she truly believed. He had to get her to a place where she had nothing left but to trust the Lord. Couldn't trust anybody in her circle. Didn't know which way to turn. All she had was her son, some oil, and some bread. Um, our family loves to bake. Our family, like here at home and then within our immediate family. Uh, our immediate family and our uh, extended. extended family. Thanks, babe. We love to bake. And I thought it was also interesting in the story that all she had was... Flour and oil. It didn't. She didn't have any eggs, <laughs> Mama. She didn't have any water, butter. no butter. <laughs> she didn't have any cinnamon to put in that bread. She mm. didn't have any sugar. nutmeg, sugar, sugar. It's brown sugar. <laughs> what Mark Martin Lewis said, "Ma'am, do you have it's any brown, brown sugar. sugar?" She didn't have nothing other than she, she made the most. Most of what she had on some flour, that must have been some really good flour. If all you needed was flour, oil, put it in the oven. It probably mm. came out thin. What would that be if we just put flour and oil, put it in the oven? What would that taste like? You know, when you're hungry, you're not really. Listen, when you're hungry, you're grateful. You're not, you're not where your taste buds are. It's about food. Mm-hmm. That's when you're good. hungry, when you're hungry, I'm not worried about taste buds. I'm trying to resolve survive. hunger, I'm hunger pains. He tested her faith the first time with the little that she had. She passed the test. You're saying to yourself right now, all I got is flour and oil. It don't matter if I don't have the eggs. It don't matter if I don't have enough water. It don't. It doesn't even matter. I'm just trying to survive. When you, right. when, when you, when you're trying to fight and not cry anymore, try to fight to get past that addiction, but get past that that hurdle in your life, the the divorce, the the loss of a loved one. When you're when you're fighting, it don't matter if we don't have enough water. We're gonna make this work. It was a test you of her faith. Work. You make it work. Yeah. She passed the test. Yeah, she passed the test. She questioned the man, but she went ahead and went along with it. He tested her a second time. Uh, allowed tragedy to come. We find in this story that she didn't argue with God. She didn't argue with the man of God. She did get angry. This is what you came to do? You, you came to punish me? And he said, no. There's no condemnation to those who love the Lord. You're not being punished. That that loss in your life wasn't a punishment from God. He's not being uh, ugly or mean towards you. Life happens. It just does. When life happens, that's the, the measurement of your Christianity. So we can all be Christians when everything's good, when no one's losing their lives and everyone is on the up and up. Anybody can be a Christian when everything is going your way. <laughs> what kind of Christian are you when life hits you in the face? That's the mark of your Christianity. That's the mark of your Christianity. Nitra, it was good seeing you out there yesterday. What did she say? You talked about, you were talking about baking and she said, can I just <laughs> Some peach cobbler from you in your mom's pound cake. Praise the Lord, say <laughs> it. <laughs> Nature was a good scene. She let me drive her golf cart yesterday. That was fun. Um, what kind of Christian are you, Nitra? When the, the family come at you. Mm. And they accuse you of everything. Yeah, and yeah. Why you Start being ugly. Mm. I can be a good Christian when everybody get along with me, but what kind of Christian am I when everybody looking at you ugly? Everybody got their nose up to you. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to speak to you. 
what kind of Christian are you yeah. then? Do you yeah. keep a smile on your face? Do yeah. you still speak? Do you still make it a point to love people, love humanity? What kind of Christian are you when the drought comes? What kind of Christian are you? Ahab ended up losing his life. And when uh, in Kings chapter 18, 19, I believe it was, when he said it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rain now. I'm going to go ahead and talk to the Lord. And I'm going to let it rain. The Bible says it rained again. I'm trying to find the exact verse that I read that in. It's going to rain again. No storm lasts forever. No drought lasts forever. Mm. It's going to rain again. You just yeah. gotta you just gotta hold on during this drought. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna rain again. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy cometh in the morning. Turn back over to me to James. James chapter five. James chapter 5. Verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? He should keep on praying about it. And those who have reason to be thankful with a woman, all you got left is your sticks, your flour, your oil, your son. You had a home. Apparently you had an upstairs. You had a, an oven to bake your bread in. That person should be thankful for what they had and continually Sing praises to the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord that at least I have some flour during my drought. Thank the Lord that I have some oil. I still have my son. Mm. Is anyone among you sick? This woman's son died. Mm. This is, do you see what James did to us? This woman suffered. Verse 13. Verse 14, her son died. He should call on the elders of the church to pray over. Elijah prayed over this boy three times. Lord, please let his spirit return. Let them pray over you. Pour a little oil. You think that is an accident that Elijah, uh, or that the widow woman had just a little oil? Not flour, I mean, not, not water, not eggs, not sugar. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. Oil represents what I was telling you, who Elijah represented in that story. The oil is symbolic in the laying out of hands, but it represents the, the virtue of, of God, the Spirit of God. And then call on the name of the Lord to heal him. Father, let his spirit returned to his body three times. Father, let his spirit return to his body. Father, let his spirit. Do you think James knew this story? Calling on the name of the Lord to heal him. And their prayer, Elijah, if you really believe this is going to happen, will heal him and make him well. And if his sickness was caused, hmm, hey, if it was caused by some sin. Did I sin? Is this why you're punishing me? Did you come here to, with a woman to, to punish me for my sins? Is this why my son died? If your sin, if, if your sickness was caused by some sin, God is faithful and just to forgive sins. This is not about sin. He's faithful. He will forgive you of your sins. Admit your fault. Just admit your fault. If you sinned, just say my bad to one another 
You don't get to go. We, we've preached this before. There are no such thing as just asking God for forgiveness. If you've sinned privately, then you ask God to forgive you privately. If you've sinned publicly, you owe the person or persons that you've sinned against a public apology, or at least to the group. Does that make sense? James put this in your own purpose. Admit your faults to one another, not just God. You don't get to say, God, God, I cussed all them people out the other day. God, will you forgive me? Mm. God said, yeah, I forgive you. But guess what? You now got to go do. Go confess your faults to one another and then pray with each other after y'all have admitted it. Listen, I cussed all y'all out the other day. Y'all made me mm. really mad. Mm. I got angry. I should have, I should have been angry and sin not, but I end up sinning anyway. I'll let y'all have it. Will y'all forgive me? You can do that 490 times, by the way, and they have to forgive you 490 times. That doesn't mean, Paul said, just because that Rochelle going to forgive me 490 times for calling her bad names. Does that mean I get to do that 490 times? Did you continue? No. God forbid. He said, you know better than do that. You're going to ruin your marriage if you do that. But. Forgive one another their faults so that all of y'all can be healed. Because when people who are right standing in righteousness, the earnest prayer of an Elijah, the earnest prayer of people who are trying to do right by one another, when they pray, that little boy going to be healed. Your dead things are going to rise. Your drought will end. It's going to rain again. And then he tells us, Elijah, verse 17, who was completely human, just like us. He had his own drought. Mm. He, he had to go stand up against Ahab, somebody who was trying to kill him. He, he depended on God for provisioning from a raven, from a brook, from a stream. He had to go ask somebody, can you help me out for just a little bit while we get through this? He was human, just like us. But when he prayed earnestly fervently seriously it didn't rain for three and a half years and when he said okay the drought's over because the lord told him to tell him the drought was over i'm here to tell y'all today that your gardens will turn green listen to the spirit babe our gardens are going to turn green they're already turning green by the way mm. our grass is going to grow it's already growing confirmation Already growing spiritually, emotionally, socially, financially. God has so much in store for us. But we, we can't give up like the widow woman did at the beginning. We have to trust God all the way through. And every time he gives us another book, we put it out there. Every time he gives us another ideal or opportunity. And he said, if you just keep going there's gonna be enough flour and oil don't stop flour oil flour oil flour yeah. oil flour me, oil i know this is not a, a bible study but just a quick question <laughs> does it say the weight of how much oil we don't have any because context. my my definition of a little oil could be different from your standard of a little oil but perhaps that's not what God wants us to focus on. I don't. I don't think we will know. Um, all it. All it's little is is little. Let's just leave it like that, huh? He he said, "Go borrow two empty vessels and pour what little oil you have into those vessels. I'll do the miracle." It, don't, it doesn't matter. You're right. For the person out there, their little oil might be uh, the relationship with their kids. And they just don't know how that relationship is going to mend. Mm. For, for somebody else, the little oil might be that diagnosis they just received. Somebody else's little oil is the loss of five yeah. years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, and yeah. trying to deal with. Yeah. And so yeah. he's saying whatever your your oil is just go get the vessels keep trusting me lean in on the man of god and i will miraculously miraculously pour into you a, con a continual healing power that will flow 
healing power continue to flow. It'll never stop as long as you keep moving. It'll never stop as long as you keep cooking. Stay in that kitchen and keep cooking. Don't stop. God said, I'll do the work. I'll keep the oven warm. I'll make sure that you have more than enough, exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything you ask or think. So that's a good question. All we know is this. It was a small amount. It was a small amount. Tiffany all the way from Hawaii. Good to have you. It was a small amount. You got a little bit of faith left. He said, that's all you need is a small amount. Mm. He said, you just need a mustard seed of faith. If, if all you had was a small amount, and we, we know from Bible uh, morning prayer that that word mustard seed or the uh, analogy of mustard seed is just the probability. That's all you need to believe is just a little bit. God might, he can still do it. So all I got is, is just a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. I just got to believe just the, now, it's still probable. It's absolutely probable. As long as God is in the mix, your story will change. Your mm. drought will end. That's good. That That's dead good. thing will rise. Those people who have hurt you. These are some great comments. Don't don't worry about them. I'll let you read the comments mm. here in a second. Yeah. The, the people Amen. the people who 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 have tried to push up against you. For no reason at all. Like, don't even know why they're haters. Does anybody in this room have haters and don't even know why? God said, just keep, just keep cooking the oil in the in the flour, Rachel. Keep a mm. smile on your face. It, mm. This is not a dress rehearsal. I say that often. Love people anyway. That's their problem, not yours. You wives out there whose husbands are belligerent. That doesn't define you. You're still who God called you to be, despite how they want to treat you. All you people at work who just all pray for me and my boss and the, the co-workers, we're not getting along. Be you. That doesn't define you. Your day, you don't have a good or bad day because of what they've done. You have a good day because you have the Lord. Mm. Your day shouldn't change because you got a diagnosis back. Your day shouldn't change because they said the prescription is $400. Your day doesn't change because you got a call from the school and you got to pick the kids up. Because the Lord is on our side. Whom shall I fear? Mm. Who? A little drought. He said, you're just going to need a little bit of faith. Is it probable that God can fix all of those problems we talked about? Absolutely. Because yeah. yeah. nothing is impossible for the Lord. Matthew chapter 19. I'm done preaching and teaching to you tonight. I hope this was good. Holy Spirit, is there anything else? That's right, Blue. He's got us. He's got us all the way. Babe, what comments are out there tonight? You said you, you read some good ones. I'll go to Facebook. You go to TikTok. Talk, we spoke about the oil and little. Someone says the flour represents bread, the bread of life. The oil is the anointing. I love, yeah, the oil is the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah. a, little, a little goes a long way, though. A little goes a long way. Don't leave yet. Miss Haskins said it was really good tonight. I enjoyed it. Mrs. Haskins, all the way from Maryland. We love you and appreciate you up there on the 21st floor. Amen. Uh, child of the Most High, yes. Thank you for that. No one defined defines me and who I was created to be to be nobody how your husband acts act and I have to emphasize that because I know a lot of women who are dealing with some heart heartbreak even you single men and women out there your singleness does not define who you are in Christ Yeshua you keep baking the bread. Mm. 
even in your drought. Some of y'all in the drought talking about when, Lord, when is he going to come? You keep moving, Lord, when am I going to be healed of this disease? You keep moving. You're going to look up in three years, going to go by, and you didn't even know you were in a drought. Hallelujah. Let Ahab be Ahab. Let Jezebel, let Jezebel and Ahab be Ahab and Jezebel. Listen, if you don't know the Lord tonight, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to get to know him. Amen. Um, there's only one way to find peace. You'll never find peace in this world. There's no peace at all outside of Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ. And so if you've never seriously surrendered your life, like live for him, I want to offer you this opportunity. You don't have to do anything to get it either. There's nothing extra to do. You don't have to stop doing something. You don't have to throw something away yet. Like he'll do all that later. All he needs right now is your heart. And when I say your heart, like your center, your emotions, your who you are, that part of you who thinks you are who you are, he wants that person. And if I could could just compel you for a moment to, to really consider how important Christ is, you only get one chance at this. One chance at life. I say all the time, this is not a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. You get 15, 20 years left if you're in your 40s and 50s. You might get 15 to 10 years left if you're in your 60s or 70s. Even if you're in your 30s, you got 30 good years, 40 good years left. Please live those years for the Lord because I'd rather for you to give him everything right now so that you can live eternity with the Lord rather than Make the mistake of thinking that you can live out the last 30 years of your life having fun, doing what you want to do, ignoring God. Not right now. This is not serious. I ain't ready to quit yet. I still got a lot of life left. And then spend thousands of years in hell. Mm. I say it all the time and I'll say it now. I wish I could tell you that after about 500 years in the grave, the year uh, 2501, the Lord's going to come visit you in hell and say, hey, just want to check on you. Do you do you want to come live for me now? I, I wish I could tell you that in a thousand years from now in the year. Uh, was this 20, 21 in the year 3031? If we're still out here, which we may not be, but I wish I could tell you a thousand years from now. He loves you enough to pause hell, turn the temperature down. And say, hey, if you would just give your life to me right now, I'll let you live in heaven for the next million. I'll exchange the next 1,000 years of hell for a million years with me. I wish I could tell you that's in the scripture somewhere, but it's not. He said, choose you this day whom you want to serve. Yeah, Today yeah, is the day of right, salvation. Right, right, right. You can play with God all you want to. You can sit there and, and wait and, and think that this is a game. But life is running out here on earth and you have to surrender your soul. So if that's you tonight and you're really ready to live the last 15 or 20 years of your life with God so you can have the next 1 million years with him, repeat this prayer after me. Father, I understand that I was born in sin due to Adam and there's nothing I can do to win your approval. There's nothing I can do to escape the wrath that's coming to mankind. I also understand and acknowledge, confess that your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ in English, he's Savior and Lord. I accept his free gift of grace. I, I accept it. I want it. I'm opening the present right now, and it's mine. He can be both my savior and he can tell me what to do the rest of my life. He can lord over me from this point forward. I surrender. I'm yours. Please forgive me of all my sins. Anything I've ever said, anything I've ever done. I know it's on the cross and I want it to stay there. Now I need your Holy Spirit. The, the breath of God, the air, the wind of God 
to connect with my spirit man in my lungs and be one. Fill me up with your breath. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out this praise and we tell you, thank you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for waiting on us. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you believed it in your heart that Christ rose from the dead and is now living on the right hand side of the Father, congratulations. The Bible says the angels in heaven are giving you a big old round of applause. All of the elders and the four creatures and all of the, the saints that are already there, our loved ones are in heaven, giving you a big old round of applause. It's, it's, they're doing the wave in heaven. They're doing the wave in heaven. And Yeshua took out his pen and he wrote your name down in the book of life. Hallelujah. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, will you send me a private message? Will you send me a private message tonight uh, in my DM? And I'd love to follow up with you. Listen, we have a new discipleship class for everybody who's new to Christ or wants to unlearn all the religious stuff that you grew up learning mm. and you want to just learn it the right mm. way from the Bible. We do that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You got to send me your email address and or go to my website and sign up so I can send you a special link. We're doing this through Google Meet so we can have a private conversation without being censored and filtered by all of the different social medias. And so sign up. We have a, this, uh, a recovery class for anybody who's trying to overcome or move past or heal from addiction, loss, a death, uh, a divorce, or anything life is thrown at you. If you're the widow woman, sign up. Go up to my class. I'm pointing on t Facebook. They're like, Ken, what are you pointing to on Facebook? Well, I'm talking to the people in TikTok who have this little you know, icon at the top, and I'm pointing to the icon. But go sign up. Go to faith. Dot, I mean, faith love. I'm going to put it in the Facebook comments. Faith love dot site. And go sign up, please. We also have a uh, our, our class on I don't have my glasses on so I gotta make sure it's right we also have our class on um, um, our business class a Christian business course for anybody who's starting a business wanted to start a business want to learn how to grow the business learn the fundamentals of a business from a Christian perspective that's this week also we do that class every other week I'm only doing five sessions of this class so you gotta hurry up and get this one that's this week. You got to go sign up so I can send you the email link so we can have a real conversation. Um, I just want to help the body of Christ. I'm just doing what the Lord told me to do. The Lord's put some books on our heart. We hope to have those books out, all of them, by Black Friday. Um, so you can have them under your trees for the ones you love by Christmas. Mm. Also have some Christian apparel. I'm going to upload that this week. Some brand new hoodies, some new t-shirts, some things that you can purchase to be proud of when you walk around uh, representing the name of God. And so look forward to that this week. Um, and then we have our last Bible study on Tuesday night to this week. The last one we'll probably have maybe going into the year until 2023 give everybody a break on tuesday nights because we're doing those other classes uh, and so again we appreciate what you're doing we don't need your offering we don't need likes thumbs up we don't need subscriptions we do all this for the glory of god that's it he gets everything he he gets it all we don't want it he gets all the glory and we're very very appreciative of his love towards us um if nothing else to claim our attention, babe, you got anything you want to share or close with tonight? God has put on your heart. Thank you for joining mm. me. Some of the comments said you look very beautiful and, and gorgeous. Sister Pittman said, uh, Rachel, ooh, la la, she said. Sister Pittman didn't say that. Cedra said that. Who said, oh, my eyes. <laughs> I need my glasses. Your mother-in-law said <laughs> Your mother-in-law said, ooh la la, beautiful dress and hair. It's more like a, a, Thank you. a blouse. Thank you, Nana. Makesha was on tonight. Good to have you, Sister Makesha. 
Hello, Makesha. Sister Pittman said the enemy is really trying to work tonight. Yeah. It was jumping on and all. Hopefully, you'll be able to get it here when I hit hit it for the, the second time around and save it. Um, Babe, what do you got tonight? Oh, I'm thinking, TikTok is saying you're beautiful, too. Oh, thank you all. I'm thinking just about the the flower and the oil. Holding on. Even when it seems like it's a small amount, when it looks like visually it's not enough, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Um, think about trials and tribulations that we go through. Hold on to God's word. When we only have a little bit of strength. <laughs> Hold on tight to his word. Do not let go. Do not let go. Because life will throw us situations. And it will, it will knock us down. We, we've been there. And we're like, what happened? Oh my gosh. I didn't see this coming. We got to hold on. The scripture says, building ourselves on our most what holy 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 faith build yourself upon your most holy faith we have to hold on yeah thank you for the word that was very encouraging i needed that oh. i needed that that was good you're welcome thanks for allowing me to come in and sit we we were at an event and he was getting ready to go live. I said, may I join you? He said, sure. So thank you so much. Everybody give it up for First Lady. <laughs> if she, if she's Wait, your First Lady, stop. put it in the comments that she's stop, your First Lady. Stop. Watch, Come this. On, Watch this. Watch this. Mm -mm. If she's your First Lady, I don't stop. even know what that means in the church. That's religious too. Yeah. Yep. So don't. First Lady. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh First lady. Sister Haskins called you, said first lady looks so beautiful beautiful tonight. Hope said first lady. Shauna said you're her first lady. See that? <laughs> Somebody is laughing. Blue said yes. <laughs> yes. First lady. I don't know what that means in church. Mm -mm. What they mean, what they mean by that is you are the pastor's wife and they honor you and they respect you as much as they respect me. Thank you. All you're the, you're you the first. And she's the only lady. Oh, that's all right. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for an opportunity. We thank you for sharing with us tonight through James, through Elijah. We thank you for that widow whose faith gave us an opportunity to have a good word tonight. We thank you for the drought that they, that happened back with Ahab and Jezebel that allowed us the opportunity to see spiritually that we can get through our droughts, we can get through our Ahabs and our Jezebels in life. We thank you for your strength, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for those who gave their lives tonight to, to, to Christ. We're appreciative. Keep everyone tonight as they rest. Or may we have an amazing evening. Lord, I pray that everybody get at least eight hours of rest. That means y'all got to get in the bed by nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, give everybody eight hours of good rest, maybe seven. That means you still got to get in the bed by 10, 30, 11, Lord, so we can get up in the morning for morning prayer at 6 a.m. May we all have a wonderful week to him who's able to keep us from falling, to, to present his faultless. faultless. They all, see, that's a religious construct. To present us faultless in the presence of Almighty <coughs> God. With exceeding joy. Now and forever. Let the church say. You, we got to lift that up. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want to be religious. So I'm not going to look it up. Mm. Hey, listen, y'all have a good evening. Have a good evening. We love y'all. Right. Take it easy. That was awesome. All right.